Hey guys, do you want to build the ultimate powerful machine? Well then, skip this video because that's not going to be the best one here. No, no, skip. I'm just kidding. Hey guys, this is Steve from CG Geek. So one of the questions I get asked the most is, what is my setup? What is my station? What works best for Blender and 3D? Well, this video, boom, 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 is for you. So I'm switching from a Mac Pro now over to a Windows desktop because one reason. Power! You can get so much more power right now with a PC build than you can with a Mac build for the price, of course. So this build will be under $2,000 and will be amazing for 3D rendering, graphics work, video editing, all that stuff. It's a workstation power horse, hopefully. So this video won't be showing you how to build your own PC because <laughs> I don't know how to. Yeah, should have thought of that before buying all these parts. So no, this video will be showing you all the different components that I have picked out that I think will be best for the price to power for Blender in a build that's under $2,000. Alright, so the case I decided to go with, I'm calling it Beast Mode, but it's actually a Fentex Etho Pro. Enthro Pro? Enthro Pro. Fentex Enthro Pro. Fentex? Fentex Enthro Pro. Fentex Enthro Pro. It's a Fentex Enthro Pro. And it's a full-size case, it's a uh, monster, and I've heard great reviews about it. I've looked around it a little bit already and opened it up a little bit. It looks awesome, looks like it'll be great for cable management and airflow, and all in all, it should be a great case for just a hundred bucks. Boom. All right, so moving on to the uh, PSU power supply. I got an EVGA. <laughs> I got an EVGA 1050 watt supernova gold power supply. I need a lot of power because I'm going with a dual CPU motherboard so I can have twice as many cores. This is a Z9 PE D8 WS Asus motherboard. Heard some great reviews about this one. It has USB 3, turbo boost, blah 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 blah. I don't know what I'm talking about. So yeah, this uh, this should be a good motherboard. I guess. I was told anyways. Okay, moving on. So, CPUs can be costly, not in this build. I decided to go with two CPUs, I got them off eBay, they were three year old CPUs, they normally went for $1,500 three years ago, now they're being cleared out on eBay, you can find them for 65 bucks a piece. So, I went with those. So let's talk about these, uh, these CPUs that I got used off eBay. They're 2.6 gigahertz with a 3.1 turbo these are E5 2670s. They, uh, they normally went for $1,500 just three years ago, like I said, but I got them for just 65 bucks a piece off eBay, so that's a steal for the amount of power you get out of one of these Exxons. Exxons? 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 Exxons. So with two of these, I will have a total of 16 cores, and these are both hyper-threaded, so that is 32 threads. Mind blown again. So you can imagine with rendering, Blender, and Cycles, and everything else you can think of, 32 threads will be amazing. You'll be rendering with the CPU so fast, you won't know what to do with all your free time. So I made the decision to go for the dual CPU motherboard, 16 cores, 32 threads, because rendering in Cycles, yes, it's a little faster with GPU, and I'll get to that in a second, but every time there's a new feature introduced, or if you have a big complicated scene and GPU just won't cut it, you're always falling back on your CPUs and your motherboard. So I decided to go all out on a nice motherboard and two super powerful CPUs that I got for a steal and get 32 threads so I could render scenes like a boss. But there are gonna be those situations where you can render with a GPU and you want a good GPU. So I got another deal off eBay. Um, this is an open box but new EVGA GeForce GTX NVIDIA 6 gigabyte 980 Ti graphics card. Should be great for cycles. I can always do a dual SLI later on if I want. Have the power with my motherboard here. Should be great for rendering scenes, playing games, and doing whatever you need to. Lots of power, lots of awesomeness. Excited to use that and uh, see how fast it goes. Okay, so then for cooling those CPUs, I went with two Hyper 12 Evo Cool Masters. These uh, have the best reviews you can pretty much find. Heard great things about them. They're cheap and they should work 
well. Okay, and as far as RAM went, I kind of went all out crazy. I went with 64? Wow. 64? Why did I... I went with 64 gigabytes of uh, RAM because I was worried that I wouldn't have quad channel in a dual CPU motherboard with four RAM slots per CPU. If that makes sense to you, it doesn't really make sense to me, but I was worried about not getting quad channel, so I just went all out, pulled out all the uh, stops, and got 64 gigabytes. Okay, so these are G-Skill Ripjaw. Oh, rip my jaw. This is a G-Skill Ripjaw DDR3. I'm not going to get into all the numbers, but they're supposed to be fast, decent RAM. I got on sale, so it should be should be good, and I should never, ever have to think about upgrading my RAM again, because 64 gigabytes is a lot. Probably more than you ever will really need. I don't really know why I got that much. But you would be fine with just, say, 16 gigabytes, maybe 32 if you were doing a lot of intensive things, I guess. And then for the SSD, I went with a Mushkin 512. <laughs> I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. SSD, because it was cheap and it was only 120 bucks on sale. So, all totaled, all these parts cost me about 1700 You could probably get it similar to that if you did just a little bit of shopping like I did on eBay and look for some good deals. Otherwise, it's under $2,000 and uh, a great build, I think. We'll find out. I'll catch up with you guys when I put it all together, which might be a few weeks from now. Maybe months, I don't know. All right, so I think that covers everything. There'll be a parts list in the description, so you can check that out there and see everything I got. Yeah, so I'm going to have some fun. I'm super excited to put this beast together and see how she runs. So I'm going to do that off camera um, because YouTube doesn't allow me to upload 12-hour videos yet. And I'll probably need about at least that much. So these are the parts I came up with after a few weeks of researching the web and uh, deciding on things. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with it. We'll see if it works. Um, and I'll jump back with you guys in a little bit. More like cut to two days later after I put this whole thing together and I have some results for you guys. So I'm uh, gonna get busy working or get busy dying. You know what I mean? And we have power. So I assembled my build. It probably took me a good 12 hours, but it's all working now. Everything's together. I've installed uh, those two CPUs with the two Hyper 212 Evos. Got the 64 gigabytes of RAM in there. Everything's running smoothly and beautifully. So I'm very happy with my build so far. And uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like compared to the Mac Pro here. You can see it's just a little bit bigger in size. Um, but that's about it. On to some benchmarks. So I started with the Cycles BMW benchmark scene here, and you can see with the CPU, those 32 threads just eating through the render time, chopping it down into nothing at all. Um, the render time was right around 142 seconds, so that's really good for a CPU. Then onto the GPU, this is the GTX 980 Ti 6GB version. That just destroyed the render time, coming in at 58 seconds. Then I went ahead and benchmarked it with Synbench, and starting with the GPU, my results were very good. I got some milky smooth FPS coming in at a score of 95. And of course, the CPU as well, it just chopped through the benchmarks with those 32 threads coming in at a crazy high score of 1980. 80. Now that compared to a new $4,000 Mac Pro, that comes in around $650. So I then finished off with Geekbench 3 and I got a crazy high score, again because of that multi-core 32 thread CPU. Compared to my old Mac Pro, that's about three times faster. So all in all, I'm obviously very happy with my build and I hope you guys enjoyed watching and seeing my hardware and maybe you guys got some tips on what kind of hardware you might want to look for for your next Blender machine. So that'll do it for me and I'll see you later.